Hi, I'm Neri Kim from RNA Research Center at IBS and Seoul National University. Today, I'm going to talk to you about small RNAs called microRNAs with a focus on their biogenesis and regulation. So, uh, small RNAs are found in, in diverse eukaryotic species. They have evolved as guardians that fight against unwanted genetic materials, such as viruses, transposon, messenger RNAs, and part of genome that need to be suppressed. They can be uh, defined by their length, uh, which is about 20 to 30 nucleotides, and their association with argonaut family proteins, or AGO. Uh, this slide shows the complex of argonaut bound to small RNA. Um, argonaut protein binds to both the 5' prime and 3' prime end of small RNA, making a stable complex known as risk or RNA-induced silencing complex. So, um, there are actually multiple types of small RNAs um, in diverse species, but in animals, they can be divided largely into three groups, microRNA or miRNA or siRNA or small interfering RNA or pi RNA, PV interacting RNA. They are slightly different from, uh, in terms of the length, with pi RNA being the longest one. Um, among the two argonaut subclades, AGO and PV, microRNAs and siRNAs interact with AGO subfamily, and pi RNAs interact with PV subclade proteins. They also differ in terms of the requirements for processing enzymes. Uh, microRNAs depend on both Drosia and Dysa, and siRNAs use only uh, Dysa. Pi RNA biogenesis complex, uh, bio biogenesis pathway is more complex, requiring several um, endonucleases and exonucleases. MicroRNAs have evolved to regulate protein coding genes. SIRNAs have more diverse functions. Uh, Pi RNAs uh, mainly function in transposon silencing in germ cells. Today, I'm going to focus on the microRNA class that regulate protein coding genes. So, how do microRNAs act? They act as guide molecules in post-transcriptional gene silencing by base pairing with their target mRNAs. In plants, most microRNAs make nearly perfect match, leading to the cleavage of the RNA. But this is rare in animals. In animals, uh, microRNAs usually make a partial match to the 3' UTR of mRNA. If you have a closer look at the interaction between microRNA and their target, the position 2 to 7 or 8 of the microRNA sequences make a perfect match to their target. And these sequences are called seed sequences. And through this kind of interaction, a micro, each microRNA can potentially target hundreds of messenger RNAs. And there are hundreds of microRNA genes in, in uh, each species. So, uh, as a result, microRNAs have important functions in both development and pathology of uh, mammalian cells and beyond. So, um, if you knock out a biogenesis factor for microRNA to wipe up, out all microRNAs, um, the animals are dead, are dead at the, in early embryonic stage in most species that have been tested, indicating that microRNAs indeed play important roles. If you knock out some individual microRNAs, you will find some interesting phenotypes. For instance, this is MIR-8 from flies. Compared to the wild type, MIR-8 flies are much smaller in body size. So, these are dwarf animals. Um, 
And, and it, uh, this indicates that this particular microRNA controls the organismal growth. MicroRNAs are also involved in human diseases, such as cancer. So some tumor suppressive microRNAs, such as MIR-15A cluster, they, their genes are deleted often in cancer. By contrast, some oncogenic microRNAs, their locus are often amplified in cancer. So given their importance in both bio, uh, in development and pathology, um, um, uh, these regulators need to be tightly controlled. And as shown here in this slide, microRNAs, each microRNA has their own unique expression patterns. Some are rather ubiquitously expressed, but some are uh, exclusively exp expressed in certain uh, tissue types. So this sets a question for this talk. How are microRNAs made and regulated to properly control the cell fate um, during development? So um, I will start by giving you a very brief overview of the microRNA pathway, and then um, explain each steps one by one. So microRNA biogenesis starts with transcription by pole 2, which generates a long transcript with a hairpin structure. Uh, microRNA sequences are highlighted in red, and it is um, embedded in the stem, so it has to be released by endoribonucleases. This RNA is called prime microRNA, and this is cleaved by an enzyme called drosia, at near the base of the stem, uh, generating a short helping called pre-microRNA. Uh, this is again cleaved by an enzyme called DISO to release an RNA duplex of 22 nucleotides, which is then loaded onto argonaut to make the mature microRNA. So, um, but um, the, the two processing uh, steps the enzymes are largely segregated into the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So uh, to connect these two steps, you need a uh, transport vector for pre-microRNA. Exporting 5 specifically recognizes pre-microRNA to transport pre-microRNA into the cytoplasm. So this is the, the, the uh, canonical microRNA biogenesis in animals. Let, uh, so, let's look at individual steps, starting from the structure of microRNA genes. microRNA loci are found in various genetic contexts. Um, the majority of microRNAs in mammals are found in the intronic regions of either non-coding or protein-coding transcription units. So, in this case, uh, the same transcript will serve a dual role to produce both protein and microRNA. Um, in some cases, uh, there are exonic microRNAs in non-coding transcription units as well. Often, microRNA uh, loci are found in close proximity to another microRNA locus, making a microRNA cluster. Transcription of microRNA is mediated by RNA polymerase II, so microRNA transcription can be controlled extensively by pol 2 associated factors and epigenetic regulators. To give you just a few examples, P53 transactivates the MIR-34 cluster, which is another tumor suppressor. MIG, on the other hand, activates oncogenic MIR-17 cluster, and suppresses tumor-suppressive MIR-15A cluster. Transcription vectors and microRNAs are often engaged in a regulatory loop, amplifying the effect of microRNA. One good example is ZEP1 and ZEP2, which transcriptionally suppresses MIR-200 family. 200 family, on the other hand, suppresses ZEP1 and ZEP2, 
through the interaction with the 3' UTR of the mRNAs. This reciprocal interaction is important to determine the mesenchymal to epithelial transition, which is known to be important for cancer metastasis. Prime microRNAs um, then need to be processed by a couple of enzymatic activities. The first step is mediated by microprocessor. Microprocessor is basically a molecular ruler and a pair of scissors. Uh, it measures a set distance from a certain structure and introduces a cleavage at a specific site. Microprocessor is composed of two um, different proteins. Drosia is the catalytic subunit that has a couple of conserved RNA3 domain and a double-strand RNA binding domain. And it also has another binding domain, RNA binding domain, in the central region, which is critical for its activity. The, answer, uh, the N terminal contains nuclear localization and some post transcriptional regulation, post translational modification sites. DGCR8 uh, binds to Drosia through its C terminal tail. It has a couple of double strand RNA binding domains and red domain that interacts with RNA, him, and mediates uh, homodimerization. It has NLS at the end terminus. So together, these two proteins make a stable complex that functions as a molecular ruler. So how does microprocessor recognize prime microRNA? In other words, what are the defining features of prime microRNA? So it turned out um, prime microRNAs are very diverse in sequences. Nevertheless, uh, they have some common structural elements. They have a long stem of about 35 base pairs, which can be divided into the upper stem of 22 base pairs, and two nucleotide cleavage site, and 11 base pair lower stem. And this is surrounded by the apical loop and the single-stranded basal segment. On top of these common structural elements, there are some frequently occurring sequence motifs, such as um, UG motif at the basal junction, UGU or GUG motif at the apical junction, and CNNC motif at the three prime side of the basal segment. These are recognized by microprocessor um, and its cofactors. So a uh, recent model suggests that microprocessor is a trimary complex of 360 kilodelton with two DGCLA copies and one drosia in the complex. And they together recognize the whole length of prime microRNA. Um, drosia sits on the basal side of the stem, um, recognizing the UG motif various DGCL8 sits on the upper side, recognizing uh, the upper stem plus apical loop with UGU motif. So um, the structure of Drosia has recently served in the lab, and it supports the model previously proposed, um, showing that indeed um, this complex is a heterotrimary complex, and Drosia recognizes the basal side of the stem, measuring the 11 base pairs from the junction. So how is prime microRNA processing regulated? As I, uh, as I mentioned, um, Drosia is important for microRNA biogenesis, and it's a very highly selective gatekeeper for the canonical microRNA biogenesis pathway. So, um, this step serves as a hot spot for the regulation. And there can be two different modes of regulation. Firstly, uh, by using RNA binding proteins and RNA modifying enzymes that selectively recognize certain groups of prime microRNAs. 
or by using modulators of the microprocessor on the protein side. So there are a number of examples, but just to mention a few. Um, LIN28 uh, interacts specifically with the LES7 family um, to block prime microRNA processing. KSRP is another example of RNA binding protein that interacts with the loop. ADAR1 edits the stem of the RNA to interfere with processing. DDX proteins, a dead box helicase proteins and SR proteins inter seem to interact with the single-stranded region of uh, prime microRNA. Microprocessor protein can be targeted as well by phosphorylation or acetylation or ubiquitination. MECP1 directly interacts with DGCR8 to interfere with microprocessor assembly. Next step is to export pre microRNAs by exporting 5. Exporting 5 structure is like a baseball meat which holds pre microRNA using its basic internal surface. And it also has a basic tunnel like structure at the bottom, which specifically interacts with the um, 3 prime overhang of the RNA. So it has the features that can um, specifically interact with the structure of pre microRNA generated by Drosia. RANGTP is a cofactor for exporting 5, which allows to make this transport complex. Once um, the pre-microRNA is in the cytoplasm, it is cleaved again by an, another enzyme, DISO. DISO also functions as a molecular ruler by measuring 22 nucleotide from the end of the RNA. DISO, just like Drosia, has a couple of RNA3 domains at the C-terminus and double-strand RBD. It also has additional RNA binding domains, PAS, and another um, RNA binding domain. Using the helicase domain at the end terminus, DISO interacts with its cofactor, TLBP, and, um, and also interacts with the hairpin, uh, the loop of uh, pre microRNA. So, um, the structure of DISO has, best, uh, study, has been best studied using a DISO homologue from Giardia, a primitive form of eukaryote. It shows that DISO uses its past domain to interact with the 3' prime end, three prime end of um, pre-microRNA and the RNA is extended through the surface of the protein so that RNA's three domains can make a cut at certain position. A more recent study on the fragment of human DISO shows that human DISO has two basic pockets in the past domain which can bind to both the 5' prime and 3' prime end explaining uh, the molecular basis of the, the overhang interaction and the, um, uh, the measuring mechanism for DISA. pre microRNA processing can also be controlled by RNA binding proteins and RNA modifying enzymes as well as by modulators of DISA protein. Exonucleases like MCPIP1 and IRE1-alpha can cleave pre microRNA to negatively control biogenesis of certain uh, microRNAs. Um, methyltransferases can, can act on some pre microRNAs to control the expression. LIN28 can bind to pre microRNA to induce terminal uridyl transferase activity and induce decay by this 3L2. 
Lysol interacts with a cofactor called TRBP, which helps Drosia to accurately recognize the cleavage site. And um, Lysol or TRBP can be regulated by uh, phosphorylation and other effectors. So the last step of microRNA biogenesis is to make risk out of the RNA duplex generated by DISO. Duplex is loaded onto argonaut to make risk. To explain you, to you a little bit about argonaut, they have very conserved um, key domains in this structure. The mid domain binds to the 5' prime end of microRNA. The pass domain interacts with the 3' prime end of microRNA. Pwe domain is localized at the center of the protein. And in uh, the case of mammalian ARGO2, Pwe domain forms an active site that cleaves the target mRNAs that base pair to this microRNA. The formation of risk is actually composed of two steps. First, to load duplex onto argonaut. This requires some chaperone proteins HSB70 and 90, which induces large conformational change to argonaut by using ATP hydrolysis. The next step is to remove the passenger strand or microRNA star sequences, usually by unwinding of the duplex. When you load the duplex to argonaut, the, the loading is asymmetric in a fixed orientation, in a way that the less stable end of the duplex is bound to the mid-domain. So this 5' prime end is inserted into a pocket in the mid-domain. Uh, 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 so um, in the loading step, the strand to be selected is already determined. So with that, um, the risk formation completes uh, the microRNA biogenesis pathway. Once risk is formed, this complex is very stable. And small RNA, the microRNA has a very long half-life. But in some biological systems and developmental stages, the microRNA half-life can be shortened, and they turn over faster. And it was shown that in C. elegans, exoribonucleases XRN1 and 2 are involved in fast turnover of microRNA. And it was shown uh, that the adenylase, adenylase WISP can modulate microRNA stability by adding additional A to the 3' prime end of microRNA uh, in uh, embryos and oocytes. HEN1 is an en methyltransferase that adds methyl groups to the 3' prime end of microRNA. This works particularly for plant microRNAs to stabilize uh, microRNAs. There are also some modulators of argonaut to control its activity and stability and localization through hydroxylation, phosphorylation, and poly-ADP ribose polymerization. So far, I have explained to you how canonical microRNA can be generated uh, through the microRNA pathway, which involves HOL2, Drosia, x 5 DISO, and argonaut. This canonical pathway explains the vast majority of microRNA biogenesis, particularly those that are conserved and abundant. But I also want to point out 
that this uh, pathway can be used partially um, to generate alternative biogenesis pathway. And some microRNAs, non-canonical microRNAs, can be generated by using some of the factors that I mentioned, but also using additional factors. So this was the first part of my talk. In the second part, I will explain to you how um, RNA modification called tailing can control microRNA biogenesis and messenger RNAs. Thank you for joining me today.